there's really this infrastructural issue that Dominic just very well illustrated. So it's always, it's really an issue of low system interoperability. Then the other issue is the data issue. Obviously, it's the, the data interoperability aspect, which is solved by the standards. And then the third current issue is really, in a way, security. If you're sharing a lot of this information between different systems, you have to have some sort of trust assumption for these additional systems. So infrastructural issue, data issue, and integrity issue. And um, for example, additional issues that come from this is it's hard to, to integrate, like you've seen across, across uh, different service providers, even across different companies and ERP systems. They use different data standards. Um, we're not really, we're, when we talk about EPCS, we move actually from data to the information level because this gets structured data. And then finally, how do you get such a system where everybody shares data? That's always, they always come into an issue of identity. So how do you provide some sort of systemic identity? And usually that has to be issued by one party. And then there's a question of which party that is and so on. So I present today a solution that actually tackles these three problems. The high system has high system interoperability, has high data interoperability, and has 100% verifiable data security in, and, and identity. So this is really the decentralized DPCS repository. Uh, it is uh, just one application of the infrastructure that is designed to tackle these three problems, which is the origin trail protocol. And it's really a protocol for data exchange, which requires no central authority, and uh, it, it is fully verifiable by using blockchain technology. So um, we can go further to the next slide. I'll explain that a little more in a little more detail. So think of um, your applications being built on the current infrastructure that already exists, uh, be that ERP systems, uh, the, the general internet infrastructure, but also utilizing these three bottom layers uh, on this graph on the right. So the bottom layers being the data layer that is introducing this semantic interoperability and, and GS1 standards, uh, the network layer that introduces the the network in the sense that Dominic already showed uh, previously where uh, we don't require one central uh, coordination body, but multiple uh, uh, pos possibilities of internetworking. And then the blockchain layer, which enables security into the data. Now, if anybody's familiar with the blockchain, um, there's common, a common question is, which blockchain do we use? Which data goes to the blockchain? And I'll quickly answer those. Uh, Origin Trail Protocol is designed to work with any blockchain, and so you can choose which one. And uh, it doesn't actually require blockchain to store any uh, uh, required data other than specific uh, non-identifiable uh, um, components such as cryptographic uh, fingerprints. So um, the common question is, does my data go on blockchain? The answer here is, is no. Um, the actual data layer and the network layer are what is the origin to decentralized network built. And this, this is actually the network uh, that we are using to implement what John Dominic has illustrated. Uh, and it's based on GS1, W3C, and ISO standards from the get-go. It hosts something called the decentralized knowledge graph, which is there to solve this data interoperability issue. And it actually enables not just querying for raw data, but actually querying for structured information. So EPCS query uh, uh, choreography, uh, push and, and pull choreographies are built on top of this. Uh, moving on to the next slide. So how does this graph work? Well, basically think of two organizations as illustrated on the right, sharing common knowledge, common data that is interconnected. And some of that common knowledge illustrated here in the white uh, part is really a public graph. And then each organization hosts their own private subgraph data, uh, which they can decide to change uh, and, and exchange among each other. And uh, that would be done using the origin trail protocol. In this way, uh, this is 100% secure, like I said, and there's the ability to exchange across all the partners, uh, actually attaching the right subgraphs to the main sort of spine graph in this case. Uh, enough about technology, um, just a little bit more on the next slide for uh, what this really means as, as a wrap up. So we're really moving in from uh, the, the realm of data, which is uh, available in currently available systems, which in a way are clo wall, closed wall gardens 
um, to the level of information where we apply data modeling and semantics, which is where Origin Trail really helps in exchanging this information, finally to obtain knowledge to actually enable this information to be actionable. Um, and this is something we actually call Google for supply chain. So uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen uh, to show you um, and let me know when you see it. We are good. Oh, great. So um, what we're seeing here is actually a prototype being built on top of the network. Um, I'm going to give you a glimpse into the network. The network actually is run by two organizations, and this is how the underlying infrastructure messages look like. I won't scare anyone with that anymore. Um, what we're looking here is really on the top of that pyramid that we saw on the last slide, which is an application, and this is the decentralized DPCS repository prototype. And we're looking at actually two companies, company one and company two, sharing data across the network, and they both have their own local EPCS repository. That means their own local um, node of this network that they host within their own infrastructure. So all the data is actually kept by by these uh, companies. So you can see there are two different, different nodes with two different identities. Um, and how does this work? So basically, uh, either through this user interface that I'm showing here, or through a RESTful, uh, and actually uh, a RESTful infor interface that's about to be standardized by, um, uh, according to the latest EPCS 2.0 standard, which we're co-developing through the working group uh, as well. Uh, the idea here is that you can actually ingest EPCS data, so I'll just import a, a, a template data set, and uh, this data set actually gets checked for, um, for compliance, so it actually showcases that the data set is compliant. Uh, I will briefly introduce the data set. Uh, this is really an example given uh, from, from, from Dominic, where we um, see one uh, object event with several EPCs that are being shared um, and with certain um, master data attributes, um, which I will also mention briefly, have a specific permissioning scheme. So permissioning scheme meaning that if you are willing to share some of this information, Part of it can be public or part of the public knowledge graph, and then part of it would be private to your own subgraph, like, for example, the values indicated here. You can also hide the whole attribute, um, and, and that really gives sort of a level of uh, a layering to permissioning uh, when sharing this uh, data. But anyway, this data set has been ingested, and now I can publish it to the rest of the partners of the network by really just clicking this publish button which can also be automated. This is just for illustration purposes. Now, what's going on under the hood right now is actually this node is actually importing this data, converting it into graph form, and sending it over to the rest of the network. And in this case, that would be company two. Um, how would company two actually access this data? I'll show that in a second. It will actually use the EPCS Explorer or a very similar interface to uh, the Google um, uh, interface that we're all familiar uh, with. And I'll actually go ahead and search for uh, a URN, or actually a, a GS1 identifier here, and show you how it works like. Uh, so basically, it actually publishes a query, or does the, 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 the pool uh, choreography uh, query, really, uh, where it looks across the network to find data sets issued by anybody uh, on this network and that, that, that contain this identifier. So I'm actually going to, it has found one data set, and I'm actually going to go into this data set, uh, fetching it from, from the EPCS repository. And what am I able to see here? I'm able to see that it has been issued by company one, that it's an EPCS 1.2 data set, and it's actually formed as a verifiable credential. That means that the data can be verified, both in terms of the data publisher. So this is where blockchain comes in. We're able to verify one, with 100% 100 uh, guarantee that this was issued by company one. Um, this goes down to really decentralized identifiers, W3C standards, and signature verification. We can also verify the integrity of the data sets and even check the corresponding transaction on the blockchain. Uh, and this is for a data set that, happened, that, uh, that was shared a couple of hours ago. Um, Anyways, uh, what, what really also happens here is that 
data model verification is is ongoing and that actually the data has been shared across across the network with all the corresponding uh, cryptographic material matching to the original um, having this verification done uh, this data exchange can be considered secure and we can actually preview this graph form of the data set so no longer just the xml but actually the json ld based graph which we can also download and download the json the, the, this json form and xml form i'm going to quickly download the xml form just to show you one last thing uh, and this would conclude the, the demo. Um, essentially, the permissioning that uh, that I mentioned uh, previously. So just give me a second. All right. So if you were paying attention, we saw that some vocabulary elements here had the visibility extension set to permissioned and hiding the attribute. So this was visible to organization company one. And for the organization two, actually none of these elements are visible except that there exists a vocabulary element with a certain identifier. So that's uh, that's a sort of a shortest uh, representation of the permissioning of how this uh, data sharing uh, works between partners. And um, finally, what's really important to mention here, this is just the user interface again. Um, we're actually looking at um, a system that can be deployed on uh, any infrastructure because the way uh, the origin trail technology is built it is an open source technology and that means anybody can really run uh, one of these uh, repositories and connect to the rest much in the way the same way as dominic has introduced um, in case somebody would, would like to actually get in co connected to the network and not run their own um, actual infrastructure, uh, uh, they will actually be able to use a gateway. So there, there is a way um, which, which is to connect two different existing EPCS repositories to the same network. In a way, this is designed to be a network of networks. And um, I guess that's that's it from my side. Um, thank you very much for the attention and feel free to, to jump in with any questions.